everybody welcome to the wall duck way i'm jessica and today's video is going to be a look inside our brand new weather and natural disasters unit study here is a look at the table of contents so that you can see what is included we have everything that you can possibly need for a weather and natural disaster unit study ranging from the four seasons to predicting and measuring weather the atmosphere clouds rains natural disasters like tornadoes, hurricanes, tsunamis, wildfires, etc. Every one of our studies comes with some sort of suggested unit study resources. So this one has a ton of nonfiction reference books, uh, fiction books, poetry, some trivia, historical fiction that would all tie in really, really well with these topics and games and hands-on activities. And each one of these is a clickable link. There are a couple different sensory play suggestions for younger kids or for kids that like to keep their hands busy while you're reading aloud. And then we get right into the lessons. Now each lesson has a very similar setup. They all have a supplemental book list. Again, all of these links are clickable. They all have a YouTube playlist where you can either click copy and paste or scan the QR codes for convenience. This particular one, because it's the introduction to it, has a Pinterest board full of different weather and natural disaster crafts you could do throughout the whole study. And then there is going to be more information down here where you can click to have your kids read more and take a quiz about that. There is a reading summary about each topic and then some sort of activity. So this is weather and natural disaster match matching. So they would match the weather or natural disaster to the definition. And then some sort of fun logic type of activity or more than one is included. So this is I spy the different types of weather. And then we have a weather and natural disaster word scramble. I'm going to just show you through a few lessons so you can kind of get a look at what it is who studies the weather. So this is going to be kind of all about meteorology, meteorologist, and famous meteorologist. And then again, now that we're deeper into the unit study, you're going to have different hands-on activities. This one is making a rain gauge and tracking the weather, which I will show you a weather journal in just a minute. These are those reading passages with discussion questions so you can check for comprehension. We're going to learn about famous meteorologist Jim Cantor. I don't know about you, but he is like, you know, the weather person we all fear here in Florida, especially if he's in your town when a hurricane comes. So I thought it would be really fun to do a biography on him. And then one of Kevin's custom coloring pages, a biography for him. And then we have a famous meteorologist word search. The water cycle as a lesson. Again, same setup, supplemental book list, YouTube playlist, a hands-on activity, and then we have more information about the water cycle with a quiz to test for that. We have those reading passages. We're gonna have some really awesome anatomy pages that Kevin has hand drawn, so those are all custom. And then here is going to be for your kids to label. Now, we have a few different options. They can write them in, or in the back, in the appendix, there is an option for you to cut out and have them glue the labels if maybe they are not either ready to write or they would prefer. We're going to make a water cycle spinner. And we have a water cycle word search. We have a lesson on clouds. Same setup as before. And then I spy four different types of clouds. And then we're going to get into the different types. So I spy the different types of cumulus clouds. I spy the different types of stratus clouds. You could even take these outside and see if you spy them outside so you can make it you know, more fun that way. We have a cloud crossword puzzle. And then, like I said, I'm just showing you a couple. Obviously, we skipped a few lessons here. This is just the tornadoes. Another one of those anatomy posters labeling it and then each of the natural disasters has pages similar to this where they're going to write down um, doing some research what the causes the conditions uh, locations it occurs the seasons they occur in like how do they categorize them uh, what kind of damage can be expected from that type of weather event and some interesting facts and then there's also pages for each of them um, that you could decide to do for all of them or just some of them. So health and safety risks of tornadoes, supply list for an emergency kit, and then coloring in the risk level for the area you live in. I specifically would do these for 
ones that really do occur in your area. So like for sure we would be doing the hurricane one. This is one page that you could do for all of them or just the ones that would be applicable to you. And then they all have a maze. So that's something fun for your younger kids or your older kids if they like mazes. This is the lesson we are the most excited about. Like I said, we live in Florida. Hurricanes happen frequently. So we can't wait to dive into this lesson. And then same thing. We have the causes, conditions, locations, seasons, categorization, damage, interesting fact, and then basically your emergency kit in a maze. And then in the appendix, we have a few different things. This is a natural disasters project that would be for older kids because they are actually going to research a specific natural disaster that has happened in history. Here is a kind of a page to help them do that. So the name of the natural disaster, where it happened, the date and time, the classification, preparation for it, injuries and deaths that occurred, what happened, and then effects, environmental effects, cultural and economic effects, and lasting effects. And then to make it a little bit easier, um, there is going to be a list of kind of famous events that have happened. So these are all the earthquakes, the name of them, where they happened, and the year landslides and mudslides, tornadoes, volcanic eruptions, tropical storms, which would be your hurricanes, typhoons, and cyclones, wildfires. So there are tons of them to choose from, including blizzards and winter storms too. So they would research one of those and kind of do a deep dive into it to learn a lot about the real life effects of these storms. There are also writing prompts, tons of them. And then there are a few figurative language activities that would tie into the theme. So we have weather and natural disaster themed metaphors and similes, weather and natural disaster themed hyperboles and personification. And then, like I said, we have those labels for the anatomy pages. Now, if you'll remember, I said that in the very beginning for the meteorology unit, you were going to make a rain gauge and you were going to start tracking the weather. This is included as your weather journal. There are a few different options. We have an I can watch the weather. This would be probably your easiest one for your youngest kids because they're just going to color in the correct season, circle the day, circle the date, color in the month, color in the temperature, color in your water gauge, which you'll be reading from the rain gauge that you're going to create, and they're going to circle what the weather looks like. So you would print however many of these for however many days you think you're going to be doing the unit study in general. The next level up is the daily weather journal. They would write the season, write the month, write the day, color in the weather, color in the water gauge, and then they're gonna chart the daily temperatures for each day of the week. Again, you would print however many of those you need. And then this one I think is great for all ages because it's a graphing kind of experiment and tracking. You would write whatever month it is and then whatever day. So let's say for example, September 1st, our weather is from 70 degrees as a low to 100 degrees as a high, you would color that in. And you would do it for the whole month so that you could see the range of temperatures that were happening in your area. One thing we pride ourselves on with our unit studies is that the whole family can do them together. So I like to make sure that I'm adding in extra things to keep your younger ones busy if they're not quite ready for the bulk of the unit study. So for that, we have some of the Weather Do -A Dot pages. There are about 10 of these. Um, just those fun do a daubers. You could have them do those or the little round stickers. We also have some weather color by number. There are also some weather instruments color by number. So there's quite a few of these. If you have a kid who likes to color, we have some weather connect the dots so that your younger kids can be involved while also practicing that one-to-one -one number correspondence. We have some weather Play-Doh mats here so that they can be doing some sensory play while you are reading aloud or just to practice that pincer grip. And then geo board ideas, which you guys, these are not even just for your younger kids because I'm pretty sure Kevin and I <laughs> were competing over who could get the hard ones done the fastest the other day. Um, but we have easy, which would be uh, for your younger kids and then the hard, which would be for your older kids. And no Waldock Way unit is ever complete without games, and this unit has a ton of them. So let's go ahead and take a closer look. First up, we have Sort the Fact or Fiction cards. So there are 36 cards, 
each is either fact or fictional. You're going to have your kids sort them. So here we have the imaginary line around the earth that divides the northern and hemis southern hemispheres. It's called the tropical cancer. That is fiction. So we're going to put that there. So you would just keep sorting the different cards based off of fact or fiction. And there is an answer key provided. Next up, we have weather Sudoku puzzles. There are three different levels. There is a four by four, a six by six, and a nine by nine. So you can have your younger kids do this one, your older kids do this one, or what I like to do with Emily is have her start with this one and progress to the harder one. And then there will be cutouts for each of them. And so you would just have them fill in wherever it belonged. So for example, not the best at this as you can tell, and then would just keep doing the puzzles using the pieces provided. There is an answer key as well. Next up we have weather bingo. So you would just draw your card and then cover that. And then obviously whoever got five in a row across up and down or diagonal would be the winner. Next, we have a weather and natural disaster version of Spot It, which is one of Emily and my favorite games to play. The way we play is we flip a card in the middle and we each race to get rid of our pile first. Now here's an insider tip. If you're playing against a younger player, what I used to do when she was younger and was not necessarily capable of beating me is when I would deal, I would deal one card to her and two cards to me, which essentially made my pile to get rid of twice as large as hers. So that's an insider tip. Uh, basically what you do is you each flip your card over and you race to find a match on the card in the middle. So in this case, it would be the clouds, which then obviously uh, there's clouds here as well. Let's see if I can do this. That one has clouds and we have precipitation. So we would just keep playing until somebody ran out of cards. So the anemometer. So now this person would be the winner. And the last game is a trivia based game. I love to try to include these because it is a great fun way to review everything you've learned in a unit study. So here's your spinner. Your little game pieces are these cute little cars because you are trying to make your way home through all of the weather and natural disasters. And then depending on the spaces that you land on here, you would go back to start, skip a turn, switch places with your opponent, go back a space. Or if you land on one of these corresponding, for example, the sun, you would choose a weather powered card that would have a trivia question on it. Here are an examples of some of the trivia questions we have what is the hottest type of climate for weather studies? We have what type of weather is associated with the winter? That would be part of changing seasons. What three parts are there to every hurricane, which would be a severe weather question. We have when did people begin to use wind power, which is going to be a weather power question. And then we have what percentage of air is made up of water, and that would be a water and weather question. So those are just a few examples of the questions that are included, but all of the questions come from the readings that you will have done throughout the weather study. So this is one that everybody who's participated in the unit study should be able to play, and again, is a great review.